This issue of Journal of Social Issues focuses on interventions for reducing sexism. For our research, my colleagues Matthew Zawatsky, Cinnamon Daniov, and Stephanie Shields and I tested an intervention called WAGES. And WAGES is an acronym that stands for a Workshop Activity for Gender Equity Simulation. And it's an interactive activity that demonstrates what sexism actually looks like in the workplace that it occurs as a subtle gender biases that accumulate over time to create gender disparities. So we wanted to know whether wages was effective in helping people recognize the harm of minor incidents of sexism. People may recognize that sexism exists in the world, but they may not realize that minor incidents of sexism are part of the problem, like telling a sexist joke or making a stereotypic comment about women or men's abilities, these instances don't seem that harmful, so people typically brush them off as not that big of a deal. They don't realize that these small minor instances actually accumulate over time to negatively affect women. So we wondered whether wages would help people realize that minor sexist incidents are in fact a big deal. That wages would help people recognize that these subtle biases are actually harmful. Wages is a game developed by Stephanie Shields and Matthew Sawatsky, and in the game, players are divided into two teams, a white team and a green team. So it starts from the assistant professor level, and it goes all the way to distinguished professor. The object of the game is to be the first person to reach distinguished professor. Players move through the game by drawing cards that tell them how many spaces to move ahead. And there's different cards for the white team and for the green team. Each card depicts a scenario that would be encountered in the academic workplace, and these scenarios are similar between the two teams. So both teams encounter the exact same scenarios, but the outcomes of the scenarios differ slightly between the two teams in a way that gives a small overall advantage to the white team. While moving to a new office, you realize that other full professors have offices about the same size as yours. Move one space forward while you feel good about how fair it is. You realize that your office is smaller than any other full professor, and all of them are white team members. Move one space forward as you accept your office is large enough to get all of your work done. So on the surface, the discrepancy between the cards seem rather small, and maybe not that big of a deal. But over the course of the game, you see that these small discrepancies add up to produce large differences between the green and the white teams. So in effect, the game simulates the experience of small gender biases, and it demonstrates how these biases accumulate to negatively affect women in the workplace. So the game uh, portion ends when someone reaches distinguished professor and then the discussion begins and the discussion highlights the learning objectives and it discusses ways that bias can be counteracted. So to test the effectiveness of wages we compared it to a condition where participants were presented with the exact same information as wages but in a different format in a traditional lecture format instead of the interactive game. So in wages, participants are actively engaged in an experience and a discussion, whereas in the lecture format, participants are passive recipients of the information. So we also compared wages to a condition where participants didn't learn anything about gender bias, but instead played shoots and ladders, which is a game similar in format to wages. What we found was that small incidents of sexism were perceived as being more harmful for participants who had played wages compared to those who had not. So wages was effective in increasing people's recognition that minor sexist incidents are in fact harmful. And wages also motivated people to want to seek additional information about gender bias and also discuss gender bias with others. So what's really interesting is that wages was more effective than the traditional lecture format. So in both of those conditions, people are receiving the exact same information, just in different formats. Well, we theorized that learning about subtle sexism can be threatening. People are motivated to see the world as fair and just, and the idea of sexism threatens those views. 
And so it's understandable that people could be resistant to information about sexism. And also, learning about sexism can make people feel helpless and can lower their sense of self-efficacy to actually affect change. So when you don't think that you can change sexism, you might deny that it actually exists. And what we found was that when people are positioned as passive recipients of information about sexism, so when they're exposed to just a traditional lecture format, they're less accepting of the information and react against it. And wages didn't produce that same reactance, nor did it produce decreases in self-efficacy. And that's because wages uses what's called experiential learning. It allows people to discover how subtle sexism works by providing them with a hands-on experience where they can construct knowledge incrementally and through dialogue. And this makes the information less threatening. And being actively engaged in that knowledge process participants are able to maintain their sense of self-efficacy. So these results suggest that wages is an effective way to teach people about subtle sexism. It increases the recognition that small biases are in fact harmful, and it increases motivation to seek additional information about sexism. And these are important first steps for addressing bias. And so our research on wages testifies to its effectiveness as an evidence-based tool that has the potential to be used in organizations as that initial first step toward recognizing and addressing bias.